The co-op bookshop goes into administration. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my morning stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from the Sydney Morning Herald and News.com about the co-op bookshop. Now, it's another business that has gone under due to, well, part of the retail recession, but it's an interesting, interesting business because it's dealing with textbooks and in the universities. So you know, if you're not aware, if you haven't been to uni, you'll often have a textbook that's reprinted every year. They make slight changes and slight revisions and you need to have this version for the course that you're doing. So you're constantly buying again and again and again. And it can be quite frustrating when you're at university. So you know, in some ways they should have an advantage. Although perhaps we're not as bad as how America is or now that you have access to digital textbooks and digital books, maybe people are saving money like that can't really resell them. So let's have a look at this article. Let's have a look. Co-op bookshop enters voluntary administration. The company behind famous retail brands, Australian Ge Geographic and the co-op bookshop has entered voluntary administration, owing more than 15 million to toy sellers and publishers. Damn. Damn, before we go any further in this article, let's jump over and have a look at the insolvency notice. And this is from the ASIC website, and I will put a link to that if you'd like to read through all of the other insolvency notices related to this, or just other businesses in general. But oh, probably a good one to check if you're ever entering into a contract, particularly in the construction game, guys. So Co-Info Proprietary Limited is the company, and the company is the University Cooperative Bookshop Limited also trading as Curious Planet. And there'll be one for all the different ways that it's trading. So, appointment details. Appointed on the 24th of November under section 436A, the company. So, administrators. Uh, Philip Patrick Carter, Daniel Austin Whaley, and Andrew John Scott. See company details above for the date of appointment and the section of the act under which the administrator was appointed. So, meeting details. Notice is given that a first meeting of the creditors of the company or a first meeting for each of the companies, for multiple companies, will be held at the Portside Conference Centre, the 207 Kent Street, Sydney, New South Wales, 2000, on the 4th of December, 2019, at 11am. Guys, let me know in the comments if you have ever been in a situation where a business that you've been dealing with has gone bankrupt and you've ever gone to one of these meetings to see what you could get. Let me know in the comments because I've never actually gone through with, you know, with this. I've chased people for money and uh, I've never actually had to go to one of these meetings. So it'd be interesting to see what it is like. I can't imagine it would be well, confidence inspiring for anyone. So the agenda, the purpose of the meeting is to consider A, whether to appoint a committee of inspection and B, if so, who are to be the committee's members. At the meeting, creditors may also, by resolution, remove the administrators from office and be appoint someone else as administrators of the company. Well, there you go. I didn't realize the creditors had that much power. I'm learning something new every day. Proof of debt and proxies. Creditors wishing to attend or advise are advised proof and proxies are to be submitted to the administrator by four o'clock on the 3rd of December, 2019. Special instructions. A person or the proxy or attorney of a person who wishes to participate in the meeting by telephone must give by the 2nd of December 2019 a written statement by email to Jonathan McConnell at Prince Waterhouse Coopers setting out the name of the person and of the proxy or attorney if any and an address to which a notice to the person proxy or attorney may be sent. Three, a method by which the person proxy or attorney may be contacted for the purpose of the meeting. So there you go, there is the notice. This is the first stage in this process. So let's jump back here, I'll have a shot of coffee. We'll see how it goes. The administrators, Prince Waterhouse Coopers, uh, PL, PWCs, Philip Carter, Andrew Scott, and Daniel Wally confirmed they were investigating payments made to a major supplier controlled by co-op chief executive Thornton Wichtendahl which received more than 500,000 in advance for goods not yet supplied. Okay, now the issue with this is they could have been, you know, they realized the co-op bookshop may have, under, may have 
seen the writing on the wall. So they made an advance payment to this company that has a conflict of interest and they've got preferential treatment. So this doesn't mean this money is gone. They can chase that money. They can chase that money. So discussions with administrators ramped up after the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age last week revealed suppliers to the co-op bookshop, which owns both the Staple University Bookstore and Curious Planet, formerly known as Australian Geographic, were owed more than 12 million and nervous that six figure debts overdue by more than 90 days would go unpaid. Well, there you go, guys. <clears throat> six figure debts overdue by more than 90 days. Damn. I think a lot of people in the construction industry would be familiar with that. It's sad. Co op bookshop chairman Joe Merrill said weak sales left the board with no choice but to appoint an administrator late on Sunday night. The combination of weak retail trade figures coming up to Christmas and the collapse of over-the-counter textbook sales by over 40% from last year has left the board with no alternative but to appoint a voluntary administrator to help this proud organization through this period of time, he said. Former Macquarie University Vice Chancellor Danny Yerbury Another director described administration as a difficult but necessary decision. Administrator Phil Carter said there were still hopes the company, which has more than 180 staff, over 300 suppliers, and doubles as Australia's largest cooperative with a self-reported 2 million active members, could be sold. We intend to keep all cooperative bookshops and curious planet stores operating on a business as usual basis while we seek interested parties for the sale of the business on a going concern basis he said adding that several buyers had been in contact since the company entered voluntary administration curious planet was described as an iconic australian business with a strong subscriber base and omni-channel retail strategy and flyers sent out to prospective buyers two weeks ago but internal documents painted a weaker picture with suppliers owed 12.6 million at the beginning of November, of which 8.8 .8 was owed for stock delivered and services rendered at least 90 days prior. So they're in a lot of trouble. They are in a lot of trouble. How could you argue it's a going concern if they're that far behind in their payments? Let me know how you think they can. One supplier, textbook publisher, John Wiley and Sons, was owed more than 1 million and 26 suppliers were owed more than 100,000 each. The University of Western Australia and the Sydney University Sport and Fitness Centre were owed six figures, as were Australia Post and the wholesale toy giant Independence Studios. Some suppliers said they had been payment issues since the co-op bookshop bought Curious Planet, founded as Australian Ge Geographic by Dick Smith in 1992, from My Family Investments three years ago. Well, there you go. Maybe they they went into a market they should not have. Mr. Carter said there was a lot more questions than answers following his first day, confirming that investigating payments made to Jack Jakara Australia, a majority owned, a co sorry, a company majority owned by the chief executive, was one of the critical jobs of the administrators over the next two weeks. Yeah, it's that seems questionable, doesn't it? That's raising alarm bells. Unlike the co-op bookshop other suppliers, Jakaru Australia did not appear to have trouble getting paid. Funny that. At the beginning of November, it had received more than 857,000 in payments from the co-op this year for 315,000 in delivered stocks. Hmm. A spokesman for the board did not comment on questions regarding the board's debt to Jakura or Jackaroo, Jackaroo, Jakura, what am I saying? Jackaroo. Last week, saying they were commercially confidential matters. Of course they are. Of course they are. Jeremy Nadel, spokesman for the Take Back the Co-op campaign, which aims to put students on the board of the bookseller, said the co-op will only return to being a successful textbook retailer that students and academics once loved once it returns to being governed by its members. Sure it will. What do you all think, guys? What do you think? Another victim of the retail recession. Have they strayed too far from their core business, moving out of textbooks and into the Australian Geographic brand and more consumer-focused retail sector? 
You know, that nice little, nice little, uh, you know, isolated sector there in the university market. You could charge a slight premium compared to other ones, a different product to what you could get anywhere else. Although when they're going to Curious Planet, if that's the start of their troubles, well, there you go. Different rates, or uh, different rents, different rate of returns. Let me know what you all think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you enjoy my content and want to help me produce more, I have a Patreon where you can make a small monthly contribution. I have Amazon and eBay affiliate links where I receive a commission every time you make a purchase that doesn't cost you a cent. We have merch on heiser.says.com.au and we also have, or actually on says.heiser.com.au, I need to get the website right. We also have PayPal if you want to make a donation that way. Thanks, guys, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.